Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. This video is back into the Pokemon Sword. I mean, not Sword and Shield. So I gotta get that on my Pokemon Diamond video. So we can join up, like, comment, subscribe, and one star, shall we? So this time we are heading to Orberg City, which I should probably actually pull up on a map because I, I should try and at least act like I don't know where I'm going, despite the fact that this is my favorite game out of the Pokemon series. I mean, maybe not this one specifically, but this region at least. So yeah, this is Orberg. God, I have not looked at this game's map ever. <laughs> Damn, that's what this place looks like. Really? Huh. Okay, then, well, we're going to Orberg City, which is this way. Oh, there's Barry. Yep, I was right. My hunch was right from before I said I was going to fight Barry. Hey, Ezel, I tell, tell you, me, tell, fuck, tell me you got a little tougher. Me? Do you even need to ask? Of course I got tougher. Come on, let's battle it out. So, we're battling Barry now. That's fun. So, uh, where was I going with this point? Oh, yeah. Uh, now I'm gonna try to figure out what I'm gonna call this one, because my bit from the last time was, from now on, I'm gonna always try to, um, have the episode have something to do, or, like, the episode name have something to do with Wukong, whether it's by, like, name, or, like, Wukong is fully involved in it, more or less. I have to make it focus on Wukong, because I want to do bits with it, so... Now I have to figure this one out. Don't get cocky, kid. This isn't over yet. What do you mean, don't get cocky? Whoever said I was getting cocky... Okay, well, quick attack. Ow, that hurt a lot. Damn. Oh, yeah, I remember, like, one of the few times... One, one day, when I was, like, restarting the game a bunch, and I think it was when I had Turtwig as my start at some point, um, uh, obviously not in this specific game, but just in Diamond and Pearl in general, what ended up happening was, for some reason, Turtwig went down to a crit, and my whole other team was, like, leveled very smallly, because obviously up to this point, like, they haven't, um... Oh, you already have Thundershock. Fuck yeah. They haven't, um added the experience share to them. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, Turk Twig went down. How am I going to win this? And I eventually did win, but my Starly was no match for his Starly, simply because his was a higher level and had, like, all the good moves and mine only had Tackle or whatever it has at, like, whatever level it has beforehand. And, of course, once the battle ended, it eventually learned a new move because what ended up happening through some smart stalling and because I had bought potions beforehand because for once I actually did listen to my gut and buy potions, um... I was able to just stall him out, and then he eventually, slowly but surely, ran out of PP, I think, or he just stopped using the move for whatever reason, and I eventually just killed him with my own Starly. I won, got a level up, got a new move, and then just killed hit the fuck out of his Chimchar, so that was a fun experience. Um, <laughs> pure suffering, actually. So Nyla's kind of giving it to his pimp club. Honestly, the only thing I could wish from a game is this, for Pokemon. One, I wish they nicknamed their stuff, because half the time, unless you actively escape the wild areas, um, not the wild area from, uh, Dynam from Sword and Shield, but, like, the wild Pokemon in general, you will eventually see every Pokemon in there. So, like, your rival doesn't have to have the real Pokemon names. They can nickname those stuff. And I guess, you know, it's to make it easier for you. But, like, even then, they can have it where the name is still, like, the regular Pokemon name. But, like, whenever they talk about that Pokemon, they can, like, say the Pokemon's nickname. Like, for example, say Rodney, Nick I mean, not Rodney, yeah. Say Barry nickname is Pimplup Rodney for whatever reason. You could say, go, Rodney, Pimplup, or, like, go, Pimplup. You can do this, Rodney, etc., but I guess that makes sense. It would be a little bit confusing. Wah! What do you mean I lost? Well, that's it. That's the last time I ever lose to you. Bet. I'm gonna be the world's toughest trainer, and you know it! The first thing to do is gonna... The first thing to do is to take on Orberg City Pokemon Gym. I'm gonna toughen up for that. Totally! Typically, when you say totally, it's not gonna happen. Ah, uh, yes, I really do love that uh, bar, though. It kind of, like, you know, gives you some information that your Pokemon's help and stuff like that, so I think it's cool. Um... I do hate how they pause like that, though, like, there are nits and picks I have with Diamond and Pearl, or, like, uh, Platinum Diamond, not Platinum Diamond, uh, Brilliant Diamond and, uh, Shining Pearl, I think it is, so, you know, I have some nitpicks with it, but, like, otherwise, I do think it's good, I like the battle animations, I think them standing weird in their models was kind of disturbing to some extent, but, like, whatever. Also, um, I don't know why, but whenever I play Shino, like, if, if y'all remember from the Doof Day, I think that was, you know, that one day where, like, the Pokemon channel uploaded that one really funny video about Badoof just becoming a Pokemon champion, more or less, like, um, with that Lucario against, like, uh, Staraptor. For some reason, every time I think of that, I think that that happened in Shino. Did it? I, 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 oh, wait, it probably did, actually, and I think now I remember it's because Staraptor's in there, while you, Lucario, yes, is like, uh... Wait, what gen did Lucario come out in, actually? 
Was Lucario a Gen 4 Pokemon? Guys, for people who know, what gen did Lucario come out in? Was it Gen 4 or Gen 3? Because for my... Because I swear now, I'm having an epiphany. I feel like Lucario's been out before Gen 4. But at the same time, now I'm starting to think he was out only in Gen 4. It's bothering me now. Fuck. Okay, well... Let's get this Pokeball at least. I was just about to say, like, let's actually get a Pokeball. But apparently it was a real life Pokeball. Okay, challenge the last... Or, oh, okay then. Oh yeah, that reminds me. There was a topic I had for last episode, but I didn't get to say it. So, I believe Don said at the start, like, the more Pokemon you have following you around, the better. And I know we all want this. Why the fuck do we not have Pokemon following us around? Explain that to me. Why do we not have Pokemon following us around in this game? There's no reason to, right? We all like the Pokemon aspect like they had in Johto where the Pokemon followed us around. Why can't we have that aspect? It doesn't make sense to me, right guys? I'm not the only one who thinks this, I'm not crazy. Like, it's so, it bothers me so much because I would love to have like Infernic talk to me, but I can't. And I'm kind of tempted to like go back to my uh, Diamond and Pearl in the 3DS or like the 2DS, like the, the DS in general, and then get my soul silver and then see if I can actually trade them. Because if I can, I'd be so happy because then I get to see what it's like with Infernape following me behind unless it crashes my game, which would make absolute sense. But I would also be very upset if it crashed my game because then that means I lost my Infernape forever. But yeah, that's a function I wish was in this game. Uh, it's not, or at least if it is, I have to get to the post game to do it. So that sucks. I wish they bring that mechanic back in Violet and Pearl. I mean, Violet and, uh, Violet and uh, Scarlet. God, like, I can't wait for that game, like, design-wise of a lot of the characters, I'm, like, 50-50 on, like, some of them I like, some of them I hate, like, there's no in between, it's either I like them or I hate them, which has never been a thing for me in Pokemon, and the legendaries are the same thing, there's one legendary I like a lot more than I like the other, like, typically it's a bare choice that I like over the other, I think the only other example of this is Xerneas, um, versus Yveltal, like, I like Xerneas so much more than I like Yveltal, but, like, on days, it will swap where I'll say, I like Yveltal much more than I like Xerneas. So, like, we can say it's, like, a 50-50 trade. Why am I only using Scratch? Um, but as for the legendaries of this game, are, like, Violet and Scarlet, I do genuinely like one more over the other in, like, a very vast way. And so far, my opinion on that has not changed, which is weird for me, because I feel like I'd be more 50-50 with them, all things considered. But... I don't, and maybe it's because of the name of the games that they're supposedly supposed to be from, but I really do like the Scarlet one more than I like the um, Violet one. If the Violet one's the one with like jets for legs and the one that looks like the future, I do genuinely like the past one more, like, you know, the one that kind of looks like a dinosaur from like ancient times. I like that one a lot more, and I don't know why, it just looks so much more interesting to me. So, I guess when push comes to shove, I might end up getting a... Uh, Scarlet over Violet. I'll probably get both knowing myself, but like, I will probably honestly pick Scarlet over Violet to main because, I don't know, I just like that Pokemon much more, but uh, again, that comes down to the conversation of I really hope that they put the Pokemon following you back into that game. That would be a really cool mechanic. They had the chance to do it in the Wild Area. Wild Area makes so much sense. They didn't for some reason. They have to do it in that game. If they don't do it in that game, then it's proof they're never going to bring it back. It's sad. I wish they had brought it back. I don't know why they got rid of it in the first place. Was it just like hard to code or something? Or was it not just a big hit before? And then people were like, oh, this is boring when it first came out. Then afterwards, they are like, oh, we missed this. Please bring it back. And they didn't, which sucks. But that's just how it goes. It's unfortunate. Do I agree with it? No. Do I hate them for it? Yes. But do I care anymore? No. So, level up Nyla, level up on Bidoof, or as I'm going to call him, Buff Doof, when I eventually get to change his name again. Where's the name changer, by the way? Did I pass that town? The, is there a name changer in this game? I assume there is. I know there's a Pokemon fan game where, like, the name changer's in every town, if I remember correctly, or he's in the first town. So, like, I'm having paranoia that, um, the first town had, like, Jubilee City over there, had the name changer, and I walked right past him. And I feel like that's the case, and I'm kind of worried about that. I mean, why I care, I don't know. Honestly, y'all probably already getting tired of uh, Wukong, to be fair, because I just spammed him every time, but to be fair, I also did the same thing with all my other starters, specifically Cinderace, too. So, you know, if you're tired of it, too bad. You're sticking with it, you're, you're, you're stuck with it. You, ha you have to deal with just me spamming Infernape or Wukong. Especially when he becomes an Infernape. When he becomes an Infernape, I'm gonna spam him a lot. 
Actually, yeah, someone keep track for me, please. Can someone keep track on to me for like every battle Wukong wins and doesn't die? Like, and I, I'm meaning like I don't just like revive him or I don't like, well, we'll count potions. We'll count potions, but like, we won't count revives. Uh, can someone count how many times he wins without me having to revive him? Because if so, and he goes this entire let's play without having gone down once, without me having to like switch or cheat or do anything outside of heal him, then that tells me that his original name W, that was purely an accident, was a premonition to the fact that Wukong truly was the king of all victory. You know what? That's what I'm gonna do. At the end of this let's play, if we've gotten to the point where Wukong in every battle he's been in has never fainted once, without me having to switch him out um, unintentionally. Like, if they use a move that forces me to switch him out, then that's a different story. But if we get through that whole game without him dying once, I will call the final episode of the playthrough W. Because it's meant to represent Wukong, the W, the King, the Champion, W. <laughs> I swear, it's gonna happen now, isn't it? That's my goal now. Make it to the entirety of this Let's Play finale, and then I just call him W. For everyone who clicks on it, they'll be like, what the fuck? Why is it just called W? It won't even have Pokemon Diamond and Pearl on it. No, it'll just say W. Just flat out W. For those of you who watch this video, you'll know what happens if we get to that point and what that video is, but um, we probably won't because I'm very dumb and he'll probably faint long before then. My guess is... By basis, Wukong will probably faint before the first gym or during the first gym battle, considering I plan on making Wukong the one that fights that entire gym battle on his own. So, because that's how I always play this game. So, if Wukong doesn't faint there, then I predict all the way till the sixth gym. Like, fifth to seventh gym, I predict he faints there. If he doesn't faint by then, I predict that he will probably make it to the Elite Four, and he will either faint to Cynthia or the last Elite Four member. One of the two. I don't know why. I feel like that's going to be the case. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm right. So, that's something to look forward to. Oh, he's a trainer, isn't he? He is. You got a Poketech, but aren't you a Pokemon? Let's make a gift. Oh, he gave us a technical machine. That's cool. Wait, does he give us Rock Climbers or Rock Smash? It's FYI, technical machines, Pokemon move, they would break. Oh, he did give us Rock Smash. Hit a move zap. Yeah, so now we can use Rock Smash from our thing. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. I love that they gave that in the Poketech where like, you know, you can use hit a moves now to bypass obstacles, meaning you don't have to like teach your Pokemon HMs if you don't, oh wait, no, sorry, not HMs, but because like now every move is like a one-time use. So now like even if you don't have that Pokemon on your team, now you can actually use that move. So that's actually really good for me. And that would have been so much more useful back in the um OG where the whole reason I didn't freaking, um you know, uh, play the rest of the game through is simply because I didn't have someone that I wanted to give that move. So, you know, that's an annoying plus to me, but whatever. Because um, I'm 95% sure this will also work on Rock Climb, so I swear to God that happens to be the case I'll be annoyed. But hey, now Chimchar knows a move, so now he'll be a little bit more ready for the battle against uh, the first gym leader. Let's go ahead and heal up Wukong. I don't want Wukong suffering there at low health because I know this is a very vast rock type area. Again, I don't know who I want to be on my team. Like, um, obviously, we all know I'm shoving Wukong on this team. We all know that's a fact, Wukong staying. Uh, more likely than not, I'll keep Nyla up until the very halfway mark, maybe? Because that's where Nyla, I'll stop seeing her use. Um, if I choose to get rid of her. If I don't get rid of her after the fifth gen, that means she's, she's staying. So, I guess the rule of thumb here is this. It, with any of the Pokemon here, with any of the Pokemon we see up before the third gym, if they stay past the fifth gym, that means they're staying on the team, unless I see something I really want. That's probably the case. If anyone up to the third gym that I have on my team, regardless of who it is, if they make it past the fifth gym, that probably means they're staying on the team for the rest of the playthrough, unless I find something I really want to put on their place. And of course, after I add Rock Smash to my party, I get Power Up Punch. You know what, honestly, I mean, that's a good move for them to give, um, Chimchar, because it makes sense for his final form. So, yeah, that's fair. I, I, I completely forgot he had Power Up Punch. I did the same thing my first playthrough with this uh, new game, too, because obviously they changed his moveset. Oh, I didn't realize I was getting an encounter. Okay, who is it? Geodude, that makes sense. Okay. So we're going to take on a Geodude. 
Hopefully I can catch it, because I really want Wukong to be able to, uh, you know, get some more experience. Because if you don't remember, Wukong evolves at level 14, if I remember correctly. And it's always my goal to get Wukong to level 14 before I fight the gym leader. Making it so that, you know, I'm having a little bit of a harder time with him. So, okay, he's at lowish health. If he doesn't hit me with a power move. Okay, Taco doesn't do that much. Can a Pokeball catch this guy, please? If, yeah, if the Pokeball can get him, then I'll be able to just, like, smooth walk by this. I, I also have to think of a nickname for Geodude on the spot. Um, uh, um, <laughs> I'm gonna just call him Rock Lee. Oh, fuck. Her, her name. God damn it, if it was a male, I would know exactly. You know what? Fuck it. I'm calling it this anyways. Where's the quotation marks? <laughs> Give me a second. I've made up my mind. Um, where's the quotation marks? Is there like two quotation marks next to each other? I will spend as much time on the. Yeah, there it is. The rock. I. I. Even if it's a female and it makes no sense to call this, uh, I'm gonna call it anyways. I've got the name. It's gonna fucking stick with it. I don't care if it wants it or not. Space. The rock. Where, where's the rock? Uh capitalize. Ah, I remember those good days uh, where I used to like wrestling when I was younger. Uh, my favorite being, of course, John Cena because, um, you know, you can't see me. John Cena was literally my favorite wrestler of all time. And then, like, I don't know if John Cena and The Rock were ever rivals, but, like, in my mind, I never liked The Rock solely because, in my mind, I thought they were rivals. So, I... By instinct, I have to say, like, I'm not saying this that I hate The Rock. No, I like him. I love the movies he acts in. I loved him as a wrestler. It's just that when you compare it to the guy you love as your favorite and in your mind you think they're rivals, obviously you have to go for the one you uh, like. So, I'm sorry, The Rock, if for some reason you're watching this, amazing job. I like your movies. Jumanji was my favorite. <laughs> Etc. That. Okay, so, watch. That, that's going to be a funny thing that happens now. Um, I don't get sued for mentioning his name, will I? <laughs> that, that's my worst part of life. That's my worst fear. I just got sued for mentioning his name. Oh god, water type. Okay. So, Chimchar's first real challenge should have honestly been up against, uh, Pimplup, to be fair with you. But let's see. Can Chimchar handle the annoying side duck? Unless he gets one shot by a water gun, he probably will, because his attack rose. Scratch. Of course it is. Chimchar's probably gonna honestly bear ace through this. He's not gonna... He's not gonna die for a while, like, again, I might be jinxing it, and I did say that he'll either die at the first gym, or he'll die between the 4th and 7th, or no, 5th and 7th, but if he doesn't die between those gyms, then he's just gonna be alive for the entirety of the playthrough until the, um, until the, uh, Elite Four slash Cynthia, because that's when I imagine it's gonna be really difficult, because if I remember correctly, not even Chimchar, oh, howdy, trainer. If you don't have a single gym badge yet, other trainers will look down on you and you're a uh, total noob, right? So I'll show you where the town's Pokemon gym is. I could figure that out myself, thank you very much, but whatever. Yeah, here's the town gym with Barry in front of it. Huh? There's someone there. Yep, there is. Thankfully, I know it's not a challenge. Huh? Oh, it's you, Ezel. You, fi you finally got here. You're slow, like always. You're so slow, the gym leader's long gone now. He said he had to go, uh, oh yeah, to the Orborg Mine. I got my badge already, so it's no big deal to me, but... I told you the gym leader isn't here. If you want to challenge the gym leader, you better go ask him about the mine yourself. But wow, a gym leader is a, is a different class of toughness. Even I'm feeling run down. Thank you, good friend. But yeah, so, no, I didn't want to go into this person's house, but I might as well explore it now that I'm in here. So, I guess that, um, oh yeah, I guess that girl informs you of like what type he uses. He uses rock type, so that's going to be an interesting fight to the death. Where was I going with my story again? I completely forgot. Oh yeah, I don't think Chimchar has like a type advantage against anything in Cynthia's team. Because to my memory, she has a Milo Tick, a Spirit Tomb, and a uh, Garchomp, obviously. Then I want to say she has a Haunt Crow. I know that's a lie, but I don't know what she has. I'm trying to think right now off the top of my head what she has, because I fought it. To, I fought her to death, and I really don't remember. Oh yeah, the, I didn't finish that story from the last episode, I think, but basically what ended up happening is I lost to Cynthia my first time. I did. But then you know what's funny? She is the only Pokemon character ever that has made me actually try to win. And what I mean by try is she forced me to actually, um... New strategy, like I looked up her Pokemon, I looked up her team, I specifically looked up Garchomp because I took out the rest of her team easily. And then the game pretty much went out the same way it did the first time around, 
But then this time, when it got to the Garchomp, my Babero was up. I stalled with Babero. I saved all my revives for this one moment. I still brought up Infernape up because I really wanted to win Infernape. And I stalled it out until it used up all of its Earthquakes. Then I stalled it out until it used up all of its other... Oh, Poison Jab. That was its other move. So... I stalled out until it used up all of its earthquakes, and then what it eventually did, that's when I felt safe to throw out another Pokemon, but its poison jabs were doing me so much damage because it had sword dance so much, so I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll just wait it out. So I stalled with my other Pokemon, gave it a bunch of healing items, and the worst part is, I ran out of healing items one more before he had ran out of poison jabs. So he had one more poison jab than I had uh, healing items. So he took down my Staraptor, I think it was, or maybe it was something else, but point is, um, I eventually got to Infernape, and I knew she had no moves left. She had Swords Dance and something else, but she never used that move, so I was like, okay, you know, I'm fucking fine. I don't remember what it was, but it didn't matter to me. I can win with Infernape. So what I did is I burnt it with Infernape, using Flamethrower, because that worked somehow. And then what I did is I did a close combat, somehow didn't die to her move, because she just used Swords Dance stupidly, and then I finished it off with a good Mach Punch. Yeah, Cynthia was the worst. She, in my mind, I didn't beat her because I had to use strategy to win. In my mind, if I have to use strategy to win, I've lost that match. Because I hate using strategy to win a match. It makes it boring to me. So, I have a hate against Cynthia now. And I really hope that when I face her in this game, I don't have to cheat. And I can just, like, fight her on a fair ground. Like, not strategy versus, I guess, the game being very difficult. So, that's my hope. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, hopefully that's not the case, and hopefully I can end up winning with Wukong against her Garchomp, because that would be like the greatest victory to me. But also, hopefully, uh, Wukong doesn't die during any of that. Uh, I keep forgetting, it's just going to be called The Rock from now on. Uh, that's such a bad name for a female Geodude, but that's just the name I gave it for some reason. So, go ahead and make it down the uh, Orberg Mine. Don't worry, after this, I won't take on the gym leader yet. I'll just end the episode, because that's something I want to do. Okay, my chomps. Oh, yeah, they're telling you where to catch one. So, you know, they actually tell you that just in case um, you want to, like, have an advantage against the gym leader, because fighting types are really good against rock types. And we can actually catch a chomp if we wanted to. Am I going to? No, because if I will use it, that's also a no, because if I remember correctly, my chomp evolves by trading into a... Um, until what's it called? Uh, well, it evolves into a Machoke, then it evolves by training, I believe, into a Machamp. And if I'm wrong, someone please correct me. But Machamp, I, I can't get, because here's the thing. With my other Pokemon games that aren't Sword and Shield and Legends Arceus, I can trade however I want to, because I have two devices to do that with. A 3DS and a regular DS, meaning I can just go back and forth as I feel. But, um, I only have one Switch, and I don't know anyone in my area that basically plays Pokemon, let alone someone be willing to trade with them a champ for me, so, yeah, that's fun. I did not mean to Rock Smash, I was trying to go for Ember. Oh, well, okay, cool. But anyways, yeah, I, I guess that's fair. It also seems to be doing very little damage with my fighting type moves, but also, is also very fair because, remember, I don't have Stab yet, because a, a Chimchar doesn't turn into a fighting type until he becomes a Monferno slash Infernape, so he kind of just stuck with fire type moves that just been spamming rock type moves, so that's fair. But the Machamp is down, Machamp, whatever the fuck his name is. Do we level up from that? We do. Now he's one level away, if I'm correct, from becoming a Monferno. And Estrella's level 11, and The Rock is level 8. Why do I feel like Estrella works better as a female name? I'm only calling it that because from a show I watched last night, a male... I was about to say male stripper, fuck. That was very wrong. Uh, a male, um... Uh, a male Lucha Libre end up calling themselves Estrella? So I wanted to uh, call himself Zero. There's Rorg, by the way. Uh, does this guy want to fight us? He does. I should not have challenged him in hindsight. Challenged by Worker Colin. Okay. He sends out Geodude. Fair, my dude. Fair, fair, fair. Well, at least I can now spam a uh, Power Punch against him. I also like how the camera does close up on the Pokemon, though, as you throw them out. I don't think they've done that in any other Pokemon game. Maybe they haven't. I'm just dumb. Power Punch should easily... Okay, cuts out half his health. That's pretty good. I'm really hoping, like, I'm doing all these battles just so I can get Chimchar to get as close as he can to evolving. Because I don't want him to evolve before we get to the gym itself, but I want him to evolve before we do the gym battle because I hate how the game does it where your Pokemon doesn't evolve during battle. And that makes sense. It would be a little bit broken if it did. But, like, the anime makes it seem so cool, and half the time in the anime, that's how it works. They evolve by friendship and freaking uh, battle involving during battle, not evolving outside of battle, which sucks. I think I can think of three times 
Maybe even three. Maybe. And to be fair with you, those might even just be hallucinations. But like, I can think of possibly three times when they didn't evolve a Pokemon outside of battle. And that was it. And even then, again, I'm not so sure. And those are the stone Pokemon, by the way. All of them are the stone Pokemon. So like, I feel like at that point, it's kind of cheating. So, you know, that's how I see it. I genuinely cannot think of it, of a time where they haven't evolved something by battle. Uh, so, that's fun. I really do wish that's how it worked in the game, because that would be something really cool. I remember I thought that's how it was, so when I first played Pokemon, I would always do that, and until I realized that that's not how it works, which sucked. So, that was unfortunate, but how it went. Uh, the Rock is level 9. And Colin has been defeated. I wish he found the Amulet Coin at this point. The Amulet Coin would be really good just for money, considering all these people I'm taking out. Uh, give me a second. Okay then, on to our item. I kind of want to go through the rest. Oh, an escape rope. Well, that makes my job easier. Well, now that I have an escape rope. Okay, never mind. There's no more to that journey. So, on to our conversation. That thing looks like it's ready to fight. Rorg. Uh, oh. Cool. No, I'm trying to talk to Rorg. Okay, there we go. Okay, stand back and watch this. Using the hit and move rock smash, get rid of the board blocking your way. I did have rock smash and I couldn't get rid of the board. What the fuck? Fallen boulders need to be smashed so they're out of the way. If you could get the badge from the gym in town, you'd be able to do this too. Of course, you'd have to beat the gym leader first. That'd be me. And there he goes. So, yep. That pretty much decides that that's the end of this episode. So in the next one, we're going to end up taking on Rorg. And I'm really hoping Wukong's going to be ready. I'm really hoping he is, because if he's not going to be ready, I'm going to be a little bit upset. So, I'll see you all then. Don't forget to like. Comment, subscribe, join the Discord, follow the Twitch, and in the next one, we take on Rorg, the first gym leader. Don't forget to check us out.